the sun came out. <laughs> Just sipping on an adrenal cocktail. Lord, if you've never had one of those, please subscribe to my channel because I will be putting out a video for that soon. All right, Mr. Rooster. So it finally stopped raining and I'm doing my June garden tour. And isn't that lovely? Oh, cannot wait to eat those grapes. Gracious. Everything is happy, happy. Mints popping up everywhere. We have not been able to mow the grass in a while. We have weeds here too. But the nice weeds are, they're pretty. My kids love them. So let me come into my garden. Oh, the peaches are gorgeous. We started to get whacked with the Japanese beetles. Looks like they've kind of slipped back over, as you can see these two kind of fornicating. <laughs> We got a few leaves that were whacked, but then I just wore them out with a mixture of neem oil. Yeah, there's another one. But man, there was probably a thousand on this tree. But the peaches are all fine, bless the Lord. They are getting big. They're probably the size of a large clementine right now. Oh my goodness, we cannot wait. And of course our cherries, you already saw that. We ate those. All right, let me hold my cup as I open our gate. All righty. Well, this garden has been on autopilot. Thank you, Lord, for all the rain. It's a little messy because, goodness, we just come out to harvest and do not much else. So my watermelon and cantaloupe from seed are looking gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? This bed's going to fill up. There's my neem oil sprayer. I've been, I just spray it every time it stops raining. Sunflowers getting a little bigger. The ones in the front yard, I'll make sure I hit that at the end. Carrots are getting huge. They haven't peaked out yet, but we've got tons of mulch in this bed. We ate our first tomatoes. I have actually never eaten tomatoes this early in the season, but that was from a tomato that I bought, but it wasn't big. There it is. You see the sun gold right there? I probably shouldn't do this holding a cup, right? That is one of the most lovely tomatoes you will ever put in your mouth, seriously. And I have tried and grown from seed a gazillion varieties. So our tomato beds are just abundant. I've been um, taking the suckers just as an experiment and see how successful I can be. And I've grown a gazillion more tomatoes. So that is exciting. All right, I'm gonna finish off this and I will pick right back up. My goodness, this is heavenly. I cannot wait to take you in my kitchen and show you how to make this goodness right here. Signing off, I'll be right back. Okay, signing back on. <laughs> so we did, uh, probably a couple weeks ago, maybe a little, little longer, we put molasses. And I'm gonna do that again now because we've had so much rain. But there's just good nutrients in here that just tell that plant to flower. Um, I heard it from Roots and Refuge last year, but I feel like there was somebody else that I'd heard about it and never did it. So last year I did it and I really was happy with it. So I had, I felt like I had more flowers. And of course I put, I amend my soil for tomatoes especially, but I actually did more this year for amending my soil with my cucumbers too. And wow, <laughs> look at these babies, right? And I mean, that cucumber right there yesterday was half the size. We have had nonstop rain. Isn't that gorgeous? We've eaten like five off of this already. That one's probably about 10 inches. The one on the left is probably maybe six or eight. So we'll give the one on the left a little longer. That one on the right, I'm picking it for supper tonight. These are squash and I'm trying to train them up the fence. Um, I have a new technique and I'll show you that I laid this up, but I guess something just pulled it back down. But anyway, I'm gonna train that little baby to go up this fence and the other one to go up the other side. The cucumbers over here, I had intended to put another trellis up, um, cattle panel, but it just, you know, it just happens. You just jump into the season and you get going and you're like, okay, they're way on up here. I don't have an extra 30 bucks to buy a cattle panel. I was like 25, it depends upon where you get them. We're just gonna wing it and fling it. So here's my wing it and fling it. So this one, once it gets up here, I'm gonna send it that way. <laughs> but that's stabilizing my little tinny, little itty bitty bamboo poles. It'll do, you know, they don't care. They just wanna climb something. You could 
put some corn here and it would climb it. It doesn't matter. It would climb sunflowers. Um, so I've got it draped everywhere, but it's working. See, this one's going up and I'm probably going to train this one to go left just because I've got extra space over here for it to grow left, if you know what I mean. And that's all I do. Just wrap it around and tell it where to go. And it's going to either go this way or it's going to go down that way. The lettuce will not quit. I kid you not. We have been eating lettuce still and it hasn't gone bitter. Um, usually it does. Oh, more blackberries. Yum, yum. And I planted quite a few at the back of the fence. I'll show you those in a moment. Um, this is another squash. Seriously, I moved them all over the place. And I'm about to trim this one up and wrap up the base. And I'll show you the one I already did. There's a nice happy weed growing in the middle of my peppermint. Oh, and it's raining, so it's so easy to pull things up. So, oh my goodness, look at that peppermint bed. That one, that was something else, but it has decided it's going to be peppermint and let it be. It will be peppermint. And here is all of my first batch. And I'm going to put it over here. I've moved it a few times. But that's cilantro that's now gone to seed. Can you see all the seeds? So once they dry, this is going to be a perpetual cilantro bed until the Lord returns. Just let them drop. I'll thin them out. I mean, not thin them, but I'll spread them out in this corner and I'll take all this lettuce up and let this be a dedicated cilantro bed. It's over there too. So let's see. Let's move on over here and not get clotheslined. So as you can see, this lettuce has just been so abundant. There's a few of them laying down here. They're just about done. I've actually been feeding them to the chickens too. They have not gotten bitter. I don't really understand that. Normally when they get this big and they start flowering, um, they haven't gone to seed yet, but I've been cutting them, as you can see. So, yeah, gorgeous. And all my zucchini have survived the bunnies that keep popping in here. Pardon me, had a little squishy spot there. That's patty pan squash that's moving along. But all of this right in here is a new bed. And we've got zucchini village. We've got a squash climbing up there. And this is this new technique. I'll put a link if I remember to do it. If somebody wants it, just mention, hey, you mentioned a leak and I'll put it down. But this is what he does. He trims up the bottom foot to a foot and a half of all of his squash to prevent squash bores. He trims all the leaves and the flowers about this. This was actually about 18 inches, but I buried the bottom part. So trimmed it all up, wrapped it in tinfoil really good. He was very methodical with his. So again, I'll put the link for his video underneath mine because I felt like he did a great job describing it. So anyway, um, that protects it. And then I'm elevating the rest off the ground for this one. So I have it kind of draped and taped. We'll see how long that lasts. This leaf got too big, so it just popped. So I'll probably trim that off. But you know, I'll just let it go, do its thing. It may fall back down to the ground, we'll see. These are all my transplants over here. All right, so just thought I'd tell you what we're doing. Um, we got whacked last year with every bug on the planet. I, I know there's lots of names for everybody. There's aphids, I don't know, everything. We've done better this year. We've really done a good job doctoring up our soil. Um, we are doing a little companion planting. I always put marigolds everywhere. I mean, that's supposed to be a good helper. These are nasturtium. We started them from seed in this pot. But as I'm pulling out some bok choy, to harvest in here. I am replacing it with some nasturtium for companion because the aphids and everything that likes all my greens. Oh man, it's been so dry. This ground, even though I've watered it, it is still dry, dry, dry. And it's covered with mulch. Thankfully, all my plants are thriving. So I'm planting that nasturtium in there. And honestly, I didn't know that this was a companion plant. This is my first year to grow nasturtium. I think they're pretty and they're edible. And I grew some in my front bed for the purpose of eating. But these are for target practice. My friends over at Goshen Farm and Gardens, if you don't know who they are, go check them out. Um, they just live a, a mile and a half up the road. But Leslie told me she had learned this year through some of her reading that um, nasturtium are, um, the aphids like them too. The greens and things bed, I believe has outshined last year's. Um, we have just had the most abundant summer of rain. And seriously, I mean, what do you think? Those who've 
watch my garden tour from last year. Um, this is gorgeous. And I mean, we have been harvesting the heck out of this. As you can see, I probably came out here and got 15 leaves yesterday. Had juicing day yesterday, so we just came and wore it out. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so that's our apricot tree that has doubled in size this year. I hope it's gonna fruit next year. It tried to fruit last year, but I gave it a pretty heavy duty pruning in the winter and I'm hoping this is its year to get established. More tomatoes, aren't they gorgeous? And then I've told you the trick about trimming your suckers and then you can plant them in some soil and they will make you a plant. And if it's even bigger than that, I trim off the big pieces and just leave a couple of the little and then it will really, it will still make you a plant. I've got several that have grown. I've transplanted a couple of them. Uh-oh, this one needs some love. Golly, you got top heavy, didn't you? Let me put you back up so you don't break. And I will come and fix you in a little bit. We'll tie you up. Goodness. Yeah, when it's this level of rain, and I back when it was before we were having the rain, I was hanging everything up and just drought proofing it. Yep, there's a few more laying down. These were itty bitties just a few days ago, and now they're so big they're laying down. So we have not had a chance to even come out here to do anything because it has just been non-stop rain. I'll pop them up so they don't break. And then I will get out here and do some tying up, but they are loaded with flowers. And like I said, I'm gonna put some more molasses on. So here is my little surprise. My good friend, Adam McKee, who built this fence for us. Isn't that beautiful? He put a few black berry bushes in his side yard, south facing, and that was a few years ago. This is, I think, the third year since he planted them. And they turned into like 500 million blackberry bushes. So, <laughs> he's so kind. I came with my little shovel. He's like, let me dig this up for you. So he dug all these up. So I have five new additions that I'm positive are gonna fill this in within a couple of years. So we never seem to land anywhere for real long. We're here, usually the longest we're anywhere is about four years. And then the Lord just moves us. But aren't these gorgeous? They are happy, aren't they? So I know all this rain. I mean, look at the weeds back here. I'll just throw a real thick layer of hay back there and let it mulch. So here's, the last of the peas, I'll probably leave those and use those for seed. They're cute, aren't they? We didn't grow many. Tomatoes everywhere, babies. Oh, hello. More sun golds. That one split. That means it's mine. Aren't they pretty? Oh, yeah. Those are all coming inside. And that's our lettuce basil that I grew from seed. I've got one that's bigger elsewhere. I'll see if I can find that one because that was planted first. I mean, we just have a gazillion varieties of tomatoes. So we are going to be in the hookup. Look at that one over there. It's probably already six foot. <laughs> These were put in first. So they're definitely ahead of everybody. This is all the arugula going to seed. We harvested all of our turnips. I don't think that was on our last garden tour. So if so, I have clips of that and I'll pop it in right about here, Rachel, when you get to editing. But what'd you find, Rach? Bunch of turnips. <laughs> Big turnips. Woo woo! Show me, show me the biggest one. That's huge. Alrighty. Well, today's the I day. They are pooking out of the ground. It's time to get them. So we're gonna harvest them all. Grab me one while you're while I'm here recording. Big. Oh, good grief! That's the size of a of a I don't know grapefruit. Yeah. yeah. Small grapefruit. It's huge. All right, pick a few more, and then we'll put it up. This is some kohlrabi here positive I'm saying that wrong. So I need to do the vo one of those voice things where you can look it up. <laughs> oh, I don't think this does not look to me like what I have seen in the store, but it might just be now starting to form what it's supposed to look like. I don't know, but it's pretty. If push comes to shove, I'll cook the greens. What else we got in here? Oh, that's a bunch. Yeah. Yum. I think I'm going to stir fry some turnips to go with our meal tonight. Turnip greens, at least. I'll probably not do the turnips just yet. I don't know. Maybe I will. Oh, We're having taco night, making chipotle bowls. Little baby ones. Yeah, I might use some of those little ones up. Yum. Oh, look at that one right there by your right leg. This one? Yeah, that one's huge. This one? Well, <laughs> that was a letdown. <laughs> that was not huge. Goodbye, turnips. You're coming up. 
So the turnips will keep for probably weeks in the fridge, but the greens will definitely perish pretty quick. Oh, but it's been so dry that they're just being more prone to getting picked off by bugs. Who knows which kind? I do not study bugs. I just put a sudsy wash on them to deter it, and it's working. Oh, that one's pretty. Oh, those greens are nice, too. All right, well, that's it. Say goodbye, Rachel. Bye. Mary, you excited about the turnips? How we get to make what does that soup called? White bean and turnip soup. Girl, don't you worry. We are making that for Showa. Turnip greens, vinegar on them. That too. Yes, definitely. All that was turnips. We've already cooked them twice. This is kohlrabi that I grew from seed. And it's kind of crowded out right now. But as you can see, isn't that pretty? It's looking like it's supposed to look. I don't know if you can get down low enough. There we go. So that'll be harvesting, we'll be harvesting that before long, probably a few weeks. I don't know, it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? All right, I've got to eat one of those tomatoes. Oh yeah. So these are all potatoes that are dumb. They flowered, most of them are starting to die back and it'll be time to harvest. I'm sure some of them are actually starting to sprout and do it again. These were the last of the tomatoes that I planted. They've all gotten established and they are starting to crank it. So I'm sure they're gonna catch up before long, but it looks like they all made it. That was a volunteer from last year. Some more cilantro starting to go to seed. As you can see, the seeds starting to form. The flowers are delicious in a salad. <laughs> that off and throw it in your salad and I will show you I think I have a little bit of video footage of a salad that I made last week that was just breathtaking because I have a lot of wild ed edibles I'm sorry I'm eating tomatoes so here's our wagon trellis because all my beds are close to the ground just untreated wood we took a 12 um, foot by 12 12 feet by 12 inches so one foot by 12 feet yeah anyway let me get that right and then we cut it by four feet and that became our ends and that's how we made most of these beds except for of course all the log ones yep the log ones are my favorite and they're cheap they're free so anyway <laughs> the cucumbers here are climbing 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 they look so happy don't they and there are cucumbers all over the place last year we got whacked i really nourished my cukes this year I feel like that was part of it because last year, oh my goodness, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah. What are you? You're probably a bad bug. You're going to get some neem oil. Yeah. I, if you're childbearing age, I know neem oil is not the ideal. I am almost 55 and I got waxed so hard last year. So this is the wildfire, wildflower bed that was wildflowers last year. And I had a few other things in here. I sowed a bunch of more wildflower seeds, but then everything from last year that had gone to seed came back. So I had like 10 strawberries in here. Surprisingly, they're getting along. I mean, look at that. The strawberries, are, we ate tons of strawberries off of this and these are ever bearing. So we'll get strawberries again in the fall, but aren't these happy? And there's my comfrey, I've chopped and dropped. It's putting out tons of new foliage, but I just chopped and dropped it and threw it in this bed. These are squash over here. And they look a little yellow, so I think I'm going to add a little fertilizer. That's a corn, so this was a Three Sisters. I feel like my pea kind of drowned in there that I had. But look at these gorgeous sunflowers. They're about to come to a head. Aren't they pretty? The front bed's just as gorgeous, if not more so. So anyway, this is these are the flowers that we've been eating. They're just, they're edible. None of them's dangerous. <laughs> Kiss you could worry about that. Please don't ask me what all of them are. It's just a wildflower package. I am not necessarily the one to grow flowers, but I'm getting into it and I'm really enjoying it. More sunflowers just woven in here just because they're pretty. My roses, I don't think they're going to thrive here. I feel like they get a little too much shade, a little too much moisture, not enough time to dry out. And so they're really getting, the ones that are in here are getting hit by fungus. And I don't put chemicals on my stuff. I know you can put baking soda and I've had a solution to that and I put that on and I feel like I've redeemed some of it. But I think when the season's over, I'm gonna transplant them out of here. 
So I'll have to put something else that'll climb my trellis. So probably food. <laughs> I'll probably put some cucumbers here next year because apparently we're doing fine with cucumbers. So that's it for the back garden. And I know I kind of already showed you the orchard and I'll just go show you the front bed. Well, we finally got some sunshine. Just wanted to get a little hit of the front garden bed. These sunflowers are so tall, let me back up. They're easily about 15 feet. They'll probably go a few more feet. Got beautiful flowers popping up everywhere. Goodness gracious, there's one over here. It's a different variety. I think this is the one that's got red ones, not sure. I just sprinkle seeds and we just see what happens. A lot of these were volunteers this year in the front and in the back I planted them more intentionally. So our potatoes are definitely ready to harvest. I haven't pulled any up yet. We'll do that with our next tour for August. Basil is ready to start harvesting and making pesto. We've just been pinching it off and using it in dishes. But yeah, it's been a good summer. We've had so much rain in the last few weeks. It's made such an easy year. I'm trying to see what else we got going on here. Okay, so we've got some nasturtium flowers that are just popping up everywhere. I've been picking a couple a week, not too many, because I think they're just pretty out here. I'm putting the greens in our salads. Parsley's happy, and we've just been, this is really where I put a, a lot of my herbs. I put them in the back too. We've got some cilantro that's popping up from seed here. These are all some marigolds that have popped up from sprinkling. This little thing here, who knows what this is. If anybody knows, feel free to tell me. It popped up in our bed. It's the tallest thing in the bed. Um, I thought it was an okra at first, but it is definitely not okra. It never went to flowering. But this whole middle section is potatoes. I should just dig in there and just see what we got, right? I should. Wouldn't that be fun just to find a few potatoes? Oh, goodness. Digging, digging. I feel something. Yeah. Oh, look at there. We'll have a few potatoes we'll throw in our meal tonight. Look at that. Oh, it's like just little prizes. Oh, that soil's been so nice and fluffy. Let's see if I can find a few more. Dig deep. Aw, oh, this is fun. Oh, well, I'm glad you got to help me find my first potato harvest. Aren't they lovely? Oh my goodness. That's a nice prize. All right, well, that's it for our June garden tour. Got a few bugs on there, but they're, the plants are thriving, so I'm gonna leave them be. But definitely the neem oil was the wind for the summer. I have saved so much. And there's those looking like a little eggs in a nest. Well, thanks for dropping in. Thanks for visiting us. And thanks for checking out our garden with us. We'll see you next month.